Hey guys, welcome back to another new Makeup Sunday. So as always, I have some speed reviews for you on brand new makeup. Most of it is drugstore. There are a few high-end things kind of sprinkled in between. So why don't we go ahead and jump right in? I have so much to talk about this week. So first up is from Kaleidos. They sent over a PR package of their Smoky Nostalgia collection. So this is the most beautiful collection I feel like they've done. It came in this really elegant looking lace covered dresser. The design is really just so intricate and beautiful. And there are three different compartments that held all the different products. You can actually purchase this dresser by itself for $55, or you can get the entire PR collection with the dresser like I got for $189, which is actually a little cheaper than buying it all separately. That would be around 237. So you save a couple bucks if by any chance you want all of this. So the collection includes two eyeshadow quads, which are $22 each. We also have five mono blushes at $18 each, and then four lip clays that are $12 each, or you can get those in a set as well. So why don't we go through all of the swatches and I'll talk about all the different products. So first we have the eyeshadow quads and these have absolutely stunning lace packaging. It's really like one of the prettiest eyeshadow palettes I've seen. There's so much detail with the butterfly and the floral pattern and that black lace overlay. And then inside you have four shadows, three are mattes and then one shimmer. By the way, this one's called Cold Brew and it's honestly my favorite of the two because the colors are just so soft and formula wise, the mattes are super velvety and pigmented yet they blend easily on your eyes, which is always a good thing. The shimmer shade has a super reflective metallic finish that almost kind of gives a wet look to your eyes as well. So I'll show you guys quickly a look that I created using this palette and I was super happy with just how all the shadows applied. I think the only issue for me was the shimmer shade kind of created a little bit of glitter fallout. So I felt it kind of hitting my cheeks and also got a little bit of it in my eyes, which was uncomfortable. So I was able to solve this just by wetting the shade with a little bit of setting spray first. And that seemed to kind of smooth it out and prevent the glitter from actually falling falling. But all in all, I really liked this quad a lot. I just think it's so beautiful. And then the second quad, Black Jasmine, has some pops of pink underneath that outer lace packaging, which is just, again, so beautiful. Then inside, the shades have a cool gray smoky vibe. And just like the Cold Brew quad, you get one lighter blending shade, one mid-tone, one deeper shade, and then a shimmer for your lids. So while I didn't actually try this one out on my eyes yet, it swatched exactly like the other one. So I'm excited to try this one out when I'm in the mood for more of like a smoky eye. I feel like the gray shimmer in this palette is even more intense than the one in the brown. So yeah, super, super pretty. I just feel like I don't wear smoky shades like this all that often. And then let's go ahead and talk about the mono blushes next. So these come in such beautiful colors and they claim to have a silky featherweight formula that blends easily and gives a long lasting color to your cheeks. Here's a look at all the swatches of each shade first. From right to left, we have the shades Sanguine, Sunburnt, Joyride, Ecstasy, and Dreamwalk. And these really do have a super silky feel and nice pigmentation as well. I also wanted to just try them all on my cheeks for you guys so you can see what they look like. So let's start out with Joyride. This one is described as a beige with warm peachy undertones. And I think this is just like the perfect nude that goes with everything. It's almost bordering on like a bronzer shade, but I love it on my cheeks. So, so pretty. The next one is Dreamwalk. This is described on their site as a lucid lilac pink. And honestly, this is such a beautiful, cool toned, perfect for fair skin kind of color. It starts out sheer, but you can definitely build this one up as well and get a lot of color out of it. Um, the next one is Ecstasy. This is described as a fresh pink with a hint of coral. I really love this one. I could see using this as like an everyday kind of blush. It's just a perfect pop of color and just brightens up your whole face. And next we have Sunburnt. This one is really fun. It's described as a sun-kissed salmon shade. Definitely a little bit more on the unexpected side, but I think this would look gorgeous for summertime. And I've really been into kind of orangey blushes lately. So I really like this one too. And then the last one is Sanguine. And this one is described as a pigmented dark blood red. 
honestly a little too deep for my skin tone. I mean, I guess I could make it work with the right look, but I just took like the tiniest little bit on my brush and it's still kind of, because these are so easy to blend out, it just kind of blended into this huge like red cheek on me. So again, I feel like it's a, it's a look. It's not something that I would go for necessarily every day, but anyway, next let's talk about the lip clay. So I actually really enjoy their lip clay formula. I'm not normally a matte liquid lipstick kind of a person, Person because most of them are very drying and I do feel like their formula is softer it has a nice moussey feel and it doesn't dry out my lips like a lot of them do mine came in this really beautiful case which you can get for $35 it actually has a $48 value so you save a little bit um, but you can also get these separately if you just like one particular color for $12 so let's take a look at some arm swatches first so you can see what the shades look like and to be completely honest with you these aren't necessarily shades that I would normally reach for. They're a little bit deeper overall than my regular go-to lip colors. I usually wear kind of pinky browns and peaches and nudes, but I still wanted to try these all on just so that you can see what they look like. So here we go. The first one is Skinship. This one's described as a muted neutral beige, perfect for pairing with bold eye looks. This one's probably my favorite of the four. I feel like it's a little brown, but it works. And again, with the right look, I think it would look super pretty. Um, Cold Smoke is described as a cool toned taupey brown. Honestly, this was so dark on me. It looks like kind of a medium, almost like a chocolatey brown to me. And I really was not a huge fan of this color on me. Um, next we have Cognac and this one is described as an exquisitely rich warm toned cocoa brown. Again, not a big fan of browns when it comes to lip colors. So I don't know, I just, I wasn't loving this one on me either. And then the last one is Smeared Rouge. This one's described as a blackened blue red that can be smeared out to a magenta. The color tone changes as you layer up or smear out the edges. I actually like this one. I don't mind red lipstick on me. I just don't wear it very often. I have to be kind of dressed up or going somewhere. I do think this is pretty. The only thing I will say about these though is I had a little bit of trouble keeping them in my lip lines because they don't dry down immediately. So as I was applying them, they do kind of smear and smudge a little bit. So if you noticed in my lip swatches, if the lip line was kind of a little fuzzy, that's why I think you really need a lip liner with these for sure and that's something that I didn't do I just wanted to show you guys the color by itself but because they tend to kind of migrate outside your lip line as you're applying them I definitely recommend using a lip liner so anyway as far as the entire Kaleidos smoky nostalgia collection goes I would have to say my favorite product is probably the blushes probably the one that I would use the most often I think the colors are beautiful I think the formula is gorgeous they are very long-lasting on your cheek as well so I love that about it I would say second would be the eyeshadow palettes these are kind of a little bit deeper and smokier than I would normally wear so I don't see myself reaching for them on like an everyday basis mainly because of the shimmer shade that's in them I feel like it's just kind of glittery and sparkly and again something that if I were like dressing up a little more I might reach for but just not for like my everyday eye makeup that I would normally wear and my least favorite would have to be the lip clays I normally like I said I do like their lip clay formula. I just wasn't a fan of these colors that were part of this collection. They were just a little bit too dark for me, I feel like, and a little bit too brown. So anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this collection down below. If you were planning on picking anything up or if you're planning to skip it, I always love hearing your thoughts. So next up, I did get a PR package also from Catrice this week. And oh my gosh, you guys, this package came in the mail. It was a white box. It was actually kind of banged up from being, I guess, tossed around in the mail as well. But it had these little conversation hearts on it. It came around Valentine's Day and they said all these crazy things like go away, F off, bite me. And I was like, who sent this? What is this package? I was almost like a little afraid to open it because I didn't know what it was going to be. And it turns out it was just from Catrice. I have no idea what the male people were thinking. But anyway, in addition to an amazing box of chocolates for Valentine's Day, they also sent a few new products. We had the Grip and Last Putty Primer and then the newly reformulated Ultimate Camouflage Cream, which is a little concealer in a pot 
pot. So let's go ahead and take a look at each one really quickly, starting with the putty primer. So this comes in a little round container, very similar to the e.l.f. putty primer. And right inside, there's a little applicator sitting in a plastic tray. And I love this idea because those applicators often don't have a place to sit inside. And I end up just kind of throwing them away because they're kicking around in a drawer like with the product. So I love that you can keep it inside. This product claims to be a skin perfecting solid primer that evens out pores and imperfections while giving your makeup serious staying power. It definitely does have a thicker texture with that putty-like feel, but when it hits the warmth of your skin, it melts down a little bit more into a cream. When I was applying this, I mainly put it on areas that have the most texture, like my cheeks, around my nose, and also between my brows. And it definitely does leave a little bit of a tacky feeling behind, so I see where the gripping claims come from. I feel like foundation really, really grips to this nicely. And I noticed that the few times I wore it, my makeup did seem to last a lot longer, especially on areas like my nose where it tends to rub off really easily. So here's a close up of what my skin looked like before and after. You can see more texture on the left for sure. And then on the right, after applying the primer, my skin looks way more smooth and a little bit airbrushed. So I think it did do a pretty good job with the smoothing. And if I were to compare it to the e.l.f., let's take a quick look at them side by side. I feel like they look almost identical as far as the pack goes both of them have kind of a light pink color but the Catrice is definitely thicker and more putty like for sure initially while the elf just feels creamy when you first scoop it out same thing when you apply them even though the Catrice does melt down a little bit into a cream I feel like the elf melts even more and it doesn't leave that tacky feeling behind it dries more to a powdery finish so I think the Catrice definitely might be a better option if you're looking for something for your makeup to really grip to overall I do like it. I tend to reach for primers that make my skin feel more smooth and silky and have a bit more hydration to them versus this. So I feel like I'll probably reach for this one more like on days when I actually need my foundation to last a long time. Mostly I'm just here at home and I don't really care if my makeup doesn't last or not. But for sure if I was going somewhere and I wanted my foundation to stay put, I would definitely use this one. I feel like it's really good for that. The other product they sent over was their Ultimate camouflage cream. They used to have this product before, but I think it's been reformulated and now it's a vegan formula. I never tried the original, so I can't really compare the two, but reading through some of the reviews on the website, there are definitely people who love this one and others who are like, bring back the original. Why did you change it? I feel like every time a company changes a product, that's going to happen. But like I said, I never tried the original one, so I can't really compare them. So this actually comes in eight different shades, plus a brightening peach option as well. I have it in the shade Fair 15, and the packaging is just a little pot. It claims to be very high opacity, long lasting, does not slip, and is a miracle weapon for concealing impurities and redness. So. Normally, I don't love cream concealers. I usually feel like they're a little too thick. They don't spread. They kind of drag in your under eyes if you try to apply them there. This one actually does feel creamy when you first pick it up, but some of the reviews said that it dries out very quickly. So this was just my first couple times using it. I did feel like it was a creamy formula, but I could see it drying out as well. So I started out by tapping it around my eyes with my fingers just to help kind of warm it up a little bit and blend it into my skin. I do think this color is a bit too yellow for me, unfortunately. So I'm thinking the peach shade probably would have worked a little bit better with my skin tone and especially around my eye area. Overall, I do think it hid some of the darkness around my eyes. The eye that I applied it to seems to look a little bit brighter overall, but here's a quick close up, and I do still see some of the bluish tone near the inner corner of my eye, but I was pleasantly surprised that it didn't seem to settle into the wrinkles that are under my eyes, which was a good thing. And it also didn't look cakey, even though it has that thicker texture. So I was impressed with that. Definitely pleasantly surprised because I wasn't expecting that at all. I think if I were to apply a little more, it might have gotten cakier and it certainly would have felt heavier. So I kind of don't know how I feel about this one. I'm not the biggest fan of these pot concealers in general. I think Catrice's True Skin Concealer is probably my favorite. That's the one that I use almost every single day because it's a liquid formula. It's super lightweight underneath your eyes and it has great coverage. So for me personally, I don't see myself reaching for this little pot concealer very often. 
Next up, I have a bunch of new things from Physicians Formula, and guys, I'm so excited about all of these products. They are so cute and so adorable. Some of them I actually got in PR. Some of them I got at my local Walgreens. I believe some of these products are also now available at Ulta, so I will link to everything down below, whatever I can find. But I honestly just think they are killing it lately with all of these cute themed face powders that are all scented. It's kind of like what Too Faced was doing for a while, but at a drugstore price, and even more so because I feel like Too Faced just mainly stuck to chocolate and peaches and they kept repeating that. But Physicians Formula has really expanded way beyond their coconut butter bronzer collection. And they just have so many like fun and interesting products. So let's take a look first at the Strawberry Jam Blush. This was like my favorite. As soon as I saw this, I was so, so excited. And it reminds me a lot of the strawberry shortcake stuff I had as a kid. So I feel like it's so nostalgic. And it comes in their signature chunky packaging with the brush compartment underneath and the blush itself is pink in the background with brighter reddish pink and green strawberries on it. Yes, it does smell like strawberries, but the scent isn't as strong as the butter bronzers. You really have to put your nose up to it to smell it. Unfortunately, those strawberries are an overspray. So the first few times you use the blush, you're gonna get a deeper color. And once that's gone, you're just gonna have a really pretty pink shade that's underneath. So here's a couple swatches. I first showed the color that I picked up with the strawberries, which is like a really bright, deep pink. And then the base color of the blush next to that, which is a softer pink. And I actually like the softer color a little bit better for my skin tone since I'm pale. Here's just a quick look at me actually applying it to my cheeks. I think this blush has such a beautiful satin finish. It's not like a flat matte, but it's also not sparkly. It just gives your skin like a little bit of a glow. And it's also just super creamy, so, so blendable, like a lot of Physicians Formula stuff. It feels amazing. I love the formula. Love the color. So even though those strawberries kind of wear off a little bit, I'm still a big fan of the color. So I love this. I'm just sad that it's actually a limited edition. Next up, we have the Butter Believe It blush. So this one has multicolored ribbons that you can kind of swirl your brush around in to create a unique shade. You can also stick to the middle if you want more color or the bottom for a little bit more pink, or you can kind of put your brush in the top of it for more of like a lighter peachy tone. Personally, I think it's pretty just kind of swirling all the colors together and it gives this super soft peachy wash of color. It's really subtle. I think this one again would work better on lighter skin tones and and it reminds me so much of Lorac's Tinge Blush, which is one of my favorites that I've never actually been able to find an exact dupe for. So I wanted to compare these two really quickly. And honestly, I think this is the closest I have ever come to finding a dupe. It's so close. Tinge is slightly more peach while the Physician's Formula is a little bit pinker, just barely. But I think that could easily be fixed by just like going into the peachy section of it a little bit more and blend it out. I don't even think these would look much different at all. The Physician's Formula has a super silky soft feel just like the Lorac ones and it has that butter bronzer coconutty scent so I just wanted to put that out there. I happen to love it but not everybody does so I just wanted to mention that. Also the finish is satiny just like the strawberry one so it's not like a flat matte but there's no shimmer or glitter in it either. It just gives your cheeks like this beautiful pink flush. So I think this one is super pretty too. I just wish they made a couple different versions of it because I feel like only the lightest skin tones can really use this one. Next up we have the Matte Minoy Butter Bronzer and this one is also so pretty and honestly it's where Physicians Formula finally is catering to some deeper skin tones. So this blush has a tropical floral print and it has the gardenia and coconut Minoy scent that the Minoy bronzers have. So it's pretty strong, kind of like the butter bronzers, just FYI. And this one has several different colors throughout the product. It has some deeper flower shades on the top and some lighter nude colors on the bottom. So again, depending on where you put your brush in here, you're gonna get a different result. So here's what the color looked like all kind of swirled together. I tried to pick up all of the colors and the result was the most stunning shade. I can't honestly think of too many blushes I have that are this color. It's like a deep mauvey pink and it's just beautiful. I really love it. Next, I decided to pick up the shades in the bottom of the compact so you can see what that looked like. And if you put your brush down there and avoid the deeper shades, it really just ends up being a pretty kind of peachy shade. It's completely different from what it looks like all swirled around. So I feel like this is a very versatile blush in that way. And then next, I picked up the colors that are toward the top of the compact. And the result this time was kind of a deeper berry red color. So 
Like I said, I just think there's so much versatility with this depending on how you want to use it. Not to mention this is ultra silky, smooth and blendable as far as the formula goes. But word of warning, it is pigmented. When I actually put this on, I took my brush and I just kind of tapped in a couple of the colors like really, really lightly. There was no way I could swirl up my brush in here because it would have been way too much like major clown cheeks. So just be very careful with this one. But as you can see, it does give a very beautiful flush to my cheeks. I'm obsessed with this color. I, I just love how it comes out with all of those colors mixed together. I just think it's super stunning, super beautiful. So this is another one to check out for sure if you see it around. Next up, we have a new bronzer as well. This is the Bread and Butter Bronzer in the shade Toasty. So I didn't realize that this actually comes in two colors. They only had one at my local Walgreens, but then I happened to see it on the Ulta website as well. And there's a deeper version as well called Baked. So this basically looks like the top of a loaf of bread from the bakery, and it has the most amazing scent. It's not necessarily a bread scent. I feel like it's a little sweeter, but it does smell just like toasty and warm, kind of like walking into a bakery or something. And it has larger sections of a lighter bronze color and then a deeper shade kind of in between. The other color that's at Ulta is the opposite of this. So it has the lighter color in between and the bigger sections are the deeper color. And as far as the color goes, this is perfect as far as depth for my skin tone. I think it's just right. I definitely prefer more of like a pink tone bronzer. This one, I feel like has a little bit more yellow to it, but it's not super super yellowy, so I feel like I can definitely get away with wearing it. I have to say it's one of the softest bronzers, even more than the butter bronzers. I put my bronzer brush in it and it just like, it goes on your face so easily. Like there's no way this is ever gonna get muddy. And again, word of warning, it's super, super pigmented. So you really only have to tap your brush in it really lightly and you'll pick up tons of color. So I'm actually loving this bronzer as well. I'm wearing it all over my face today and I feel like the color is nice. It warms everything up and I love the way it smells too. So next up we have a new highlighter. This is called the Let's Toast Highlighter and it's a gorgeous golden champagne color with a lighter color in the middle and then it has a deeper shade kind of all around the edges. This has a fruity scent. It's not exactly champagne, but there's something about it where it has a little bit of like effervescence behind it. It's kind of hard to explain, but it's very fresh and fruity versus just like, like a sweet fruity scent, if that makes sense. The formula is so, so buttery and soft. And even though it's a powder, it almost feels like a cream. Like it's just beautiful. It has a really nice reflective quality to it and it blends out so effortlessly on your skin. Like it's just so smooth. I could just take my finger and rub it over it and it just blends out like a dream. It's absolutely gorgeous. I feel like they've really upped their game when it comes to their powders. I've always loved their powders, but this whole new crop of them is just insane. Like so blendable and smooth. Next up, also from Physicians Formula, I have two new eyeshadow palettes. One is Butter Believe It, and one is from their Matte Minoy line. So let's look at the Butter Believe It one first. This one is a six pan eyeshadow palette. It comes in cardboard packaging with a little plastic window in the front. Honestly, not my favorite packaging. I feel like it looks a little bit cheap, but at the same time, it's easy to store because it's small or like if you wanted to travel with it. Um, it does have the Butter Bronzer scent as well. And when I swatched this, I was actually super surprised because I. I wasn't expecting a lot out of this palette just based on the way it looked. I wasn't thinking it was gonna be anything great, but the shimmer shades really, really stood out to me. They're nice metallic shades. They're not crumbly. They're super smooth with no fallout. The mattes also were very silky and had a lot of glide on my skin with no dryness or dragging whatsoever. So I loved the way this swatched and I felt like it applied nicely also. The mattes do sheer out and have to be built up a little, but you can definitely build them up easily and the shimmers packed on nicely with a finger as well. You really only need a little bit because they're so pigmented. For this look, I actually use the two matte shades that are in the palette for my crease and outer corner, and then I use the rose gold color on my lid. I feel like it's not the most exciting look in the world, but it definitely got the job done, and I would like to see them actually expand this line a little bit more because I wasn't a fan of their butter eyeshadows that were in like those plastic packages, but these are really, really nice. I'd love to see them maybe do some bigger palettes or some quads or just more of 
these with a little bit more color variety in them. I think that would be really nice because the formula is good. And then next we have the Matte Minoy palette. So this one is actually an all matte palette with neutral shades and it has that floral Minoy scent again as well. It does have the same packaging as the Butter Believe It one. And while the formula does feel super silky smooth, to be honest, like four of these shadows are so light, they would barely show up on my eyes at all. And I have a light skin tone, so that's kind of saying something. And then you have two deeper shades as well. And I was just a little bit disappointed that this didn't have more mid-tone options, you know? Like, I feel like it's just very light overall. And then you have these two deeper shades. So this one was a bit of a disappointment as far as the colors go. Again, I do feel like it's a nice silky formula. The mattes feel just like the ones in the Butter Believe It palette, but I wasn't really a big fan of this one and I don't really see myself reaching for it at all. And then the last product I have from Physicians Formula is this new Watermelon Sugar Lip Gloss. This is in the shade Sweet slash adorable. And this actually comes with a brush tip applicator, which normally isn't my favorite. I tend to prefer like a doe foot or a paddle style, but it's not really a big deal. It's kind of a short one. So I feel like it's not the type that when you put it back in the tube, it's gonna like splay everywhere or get caught. Um, and this shade is so beautiful. It's a pretty pink. It smells exactly like a watermelon Jolly Rancher. So it's it's honestly spot on. It smells exactly like it. It's super delicious. Um, and it's not a sticky formula. It feels really hydrating and has a glossy kind of glassy finish to it. It's really, really pretty. I think this color would be especially gorgeous like in the spring and summertime. I don't feel like it has the best staying power, but that's sort of the nature of a gloss. I didn't expect it to, so I really like this. It's just another fun product. If you like scented products or things with like a theme, super, super cute. Also, when I was at Walgreens, I saw a new foundation from number seven. This is their Restore and Renew Multi Action Serum Foundation. And I was so excited because you guys know how much I love my Lift and Luminate foundation from number seven. And actually their foundations mimic their skincare lines. So they have a whole Lift and Luminate skincare line. They have a Restore and Renew. They have Protect and Perfect. So the Protect and Perfect is actually supposed to be for ages like 35 to 45. And then Lift and Luminate is supposed to be for ages like 45 to 60 while the restore and renew is for 60 plus so obviously i'm still in that first category of 35 to 45 but i feel like it honestly can't hurt to get those extra smoothing and firming ingredients and these foundations actually do have the skincare serum in it already so you have things like matrixyl 3000 peptides retinol vitamin c and e and then ceramides so it's just a really really good formula and this one claims to have a serum like texture i got mine in the shade cool vanilla which is the same shade that I wear in the lift and luminate it's supposed to have light to medium coverage and a flexible formula that moves with your facial expression so that it doesn't sink into fine lines and wrinkles and it's supposed to just give you a really even seamless look so as you can see this looks exactly like skin there's no cakiness even though the skin on my hand is super dry and I feel like it just evens out my skin tone and makes everything look a little bit smoother it's not super full coverage but I wanted to quickly compare it to the lift and luminate I know a lot of you guys love that one just like I do. So I put a little dot of each one on my arm and you can see how the Restore and Renew is a little bit more of a serum texture. Like it's a little bit runnier while the Lift and Luminate is thicker and creamier and it kind of doesn't go anywhere. So um, I think the Cool Vanilla shade is super consistent between these two which is great. I feel like sometimes brands don't keep the shades consistent. So if you're cool vanilla in one, then you can feel confident that getting the other one, you would be the same shade. Now, when these actually dry down, I feel like the Lift and Luminate still kind of retains more of a creamy feel on your skin, but when the Restore and Renew dries down, it seems to just like melt in and kind of become one with your skin. But despite this, I do think they have a similar amount of coverage. So I wanna show you guys just a quick before and after of my skin in now natural lighting by the window so you can see how this actually sits and in the before you can see that I have some redness on my nose and also discoloration and sunspots on my cheeks and this foundation on the right hand side you can see it evened it out beautifully it doesn't cover everything but I would just add a little bit of concealer maybe to certain spots and then just call it a day I love how this doesn't look like I'm wearing foundation at all it's so incredibly natural from the satiny skin like finish to that smooth formula that 
just kind of sinks in and like meshes with your skin and becomes one with your skin. So I'm loving this so far. I feel like I have to try it a little bit more to say that I like it more than the Lift and Luminate just because I've been using this one for years and I'm used to it. But so far, I almost feel like I do because I love how natural this looks. This one, the Lift and Luminate, does look very natural on your skin, but if you look up close, it still kind of looks like you're wearing foundation. With this, it doesn't. So that might give it the slight edge for me. We'll see. Next up, I also got a few products from JCat Beauty at Ulta. I ordered these when I saw them hit the website last Sunday, and I was excited. I haven't tried a lot from JCat, and these products looked really, really interesting. So let's talk about the first one, which is a primer. It's called the Instant Skin Brightening Tone Up Ultra Brightening Primer. So this is made in Korea and it claims to have a special capsule technology that brings your skin a natural brightening finish that can be used on face, elbows, knees, and other body areas. It says that it's non-sticky yet hydrating on the skin and packaging wise, it reminds me so much of a primer that I had from Etude House years ago. It definitely has that K-Beauty vibe. I feel like this primer looks a lot more like a moisturizer going on and it has that same feel also. It doesn't seem to have like a silicone or slippery texture that a lot of primers have. And as I work it into my skin, it really does seem to be brightening up the tone rather than adding a glow like most brightening primers do. It doesn't have any glow at all, but the white color just seems to have lightened my skin tone up a little bit. So, you know, it did make my skin feel really soft and smooth and perfectly prepped for makeup, which is nice. I just really love how my skin feels with this on. I'm just not quite sure what the point of it is for somebody who's already pale like I am. I don't know that I'm necessarily trying to lighten my skin tone anymore. So it's kind of a weird product for me. I'm not sure if maybe this would help like my dark spots to become less apparent or any kind of discoloration on my face. It's possible. I'm going to have to keep playing with this. I'm just a little bit confused by it. So next up we have these new single eyeshadows. I actually thought these were regular marbled eyeshadows at first, but they are a glitter topper. I guess I obviously didn't read the description when I bought them. I just kind of saw them and added them to my cart right away. Um, but they come in several different colors. I got three to try. I got Purple Rain, Star Crush, and I'm Impressed. So when I swirl my finger into the pan, they do feel a bit glitter-like, but it's so fine. It kind of has the appearance of a regular eyeshadow, which is kind of interesting. They do claim to be eye safe glitters and they aren't chunky at all. So when I swatch it, I notice that it adheres really well to your skin and the glitter doesn't go everywhere. It stays right in place, which is so awesome. So that was the Purple Rain shade. Next we have Star Crush, which has a mix of silver and red. And this one is so beautiful as well. I love how you can kind of see both colors individually and they don't just mix together. And then I'm Impressed is a reddish shade with copper or bronze mixed in. So it's just multi-dimensional and really, really stunning. So I'm excited to play with these. I'm not the biggest fan of glitters, but I think these look really pretty. And if they're not going to be falling into my eyes, then I think it'll probably be okay. So I will keep you guys updated on these. And then last but not least, we have a brand new palette from JCat called Viva La Musical. They actually have two versions of this palette on the Ulta website, but the other one was way brighter and like more neon. And this one's colorful, but it wasn't like bright, bold colors. So I thought it looked really beautiful. I haven't tried JCat eyeshadows in a long time, so I wasn't really sure what to expect. I remember being not super impressed by them, but I was willing to give this one a shot. So inside you have pinks and purples, you have a row of blue and turquoise, and then you have some warm neutral. So it's just a really nice mix of color that isn't too bright or bold. And also I feel like there's a good ratio of matte to shimmer shades as well. So I wanted to quickly live swatch a couple shades so you can see how these apply because guys, I was blown away by this palette. So first I picked up a couple shimmer shades, one that was pink and then one that's more silvery blue. And you can see how smooth and metallic these are. They're so beautiful. I was really, really surprised by them. And then I tried some of the matte shades and oh my goodness, so incredible. I picked up a dusty pink and a pinky purple and they are so soft ridiculously pigmented and they remind me a little bit of the Anastasia matte shadows. I was really, really blown away by them as well. They're a little powdery, but so, so soft and smooth. And then here's just another matte and another shimmer shade. I honestly couldn't stop playing with these. I was just waiting for a dud shade to appear, but nothing happened. There weren't any. So here's a look at the whole palette swatched out. I'm just super excited to have found something with this level of pigmentation for under $15. I'm just really, really impressed by it. I'm actually wearing this palette on my eyes today. I use some of those pink shades and I think these are the perfect pinks. I normally don't like 
brighter pinks because I feel like they make me look like I'm sick or I have a cold or something. But these are like those dusty kind of lavender pinks and they're so, so beautiful. And I had a really great experience just working with this palette. I felt like the matte shades grip to my eyes really nicely, but yet they're super blendable. They build up really well. They didn't get patchy on me at all. And then the shimmer shade was just like one swipe, beautiful. So that was definitely a very pleasant surprise. So anyway guys that's everything i know there was a lot to go through this week so thank you for hanging in there with me if you've stuck with this video this long i appreciate it so so much i hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your weekend if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and i will see you guys in my next video take care guys bye